Well, we're less than two days away now from that great American eclipse, which will travel across North America. Part of the path of totality will move through southern Missouri and Illinois, blocking out the sun in cities like Cape Girardeau, Farmington, and even Mount Vernon. Right now, thousands of sightseers and scientists are traveling to both sides of the bi-state. Many consider it a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, although it's actually the second time in seven years that we've seen a total solar eclipse. We begin our eclipse coverage with Five on Your Side's Holden Kerwicki in Carbondale, where that area will get over four minutes of darkness. Holden, lots of people heading there. That's exactly right, Brent. They're expecting 50,000 visitors in this town of just over 25,000. And so far today, I've met people from states across the Midwest and as far away as Florida. But overall, things are relatively quiet tonight. But for a group of SIU researchers, that's actually a good thing. As the moment of totality passes over Carbondale, SIU researcher Brent Pease will be like every other person along its path. I will be looking to the sky with my kids when this eclipse event comes through. However, the assistant professor in the Department of Forestry will also be keeping an ear out for what's happening around him. We have hundreds of recorders all along the path of totality across the United States. For 48 hours before and after the eclipse, audio recordings will be used to track how animals react to the celestial event. You know, there's been hundreds of years of written observations during eclipse. What happens to wildlife during these events? So we generally have some idea about what might happen. We typically see breeding birds quiet down. We'll see some nocturnal or crepuscular insects start to vocalize. There's some research suggesting that bees retreat to hives whenever the eclipse happens. While the project is purely scientific, it will help establish a baseline for wildlife management that Pease says will be studied for centuries. Yeah, it's really incredible. You know, we're basing a lot of this research that we're doing on written reports from the 1500s. So this is a, this isn't a frequent event, right? So this is a slow build and we're just here in the right time at the right place to provide some information. The groundbreaking work will later be used as part of a soundscape project to break down barriers surrounding the eclipse for the visually impaired. While we're listening to the eclipse, there's a whole group of people in the United States and beyond that really can't see the eclipse the way that we are. So the Eclipse Soundscapes Project's partnering with the National Federation of the Blind as a way for them to engage and observe the eclipse through sound. This entire project is being funded by NASA. Pease says what makes this research so important is that it will be used as a baseline for the next 350 years, which is when this area will experience its next eclipse. Reporting live in Carbondale, Illinois, Holden Kerwicki, five on your side. All right.